Hi Pisces, welcome to your August 2021 astral update. It's Rena here, and this is for the sun and the rising signs of Pisces. So I'm recording this at the end of July, and there are a couple of transits that are really going to be big in August that start in late July. So I'm just going to include them in this uh, reading because um, I think that they are highly relevant. One of them actually occurred earlier today as um, I have been recording some of these uh, last readings for, for August, and it was that Jupiter went back into Aquarius. So Jupiter went into um, your sign uh, for a hot second, a couple of months, and now that it has been retrograding, it's back in Aquarius, and Aquarius is your 12th house. You rule the 12th house in the universal chart. So this is your domain. Jupiter here. Um, so, so Jupiter was um, in your first house and might have had, maybe you had a taste of what that represented for the last couple of months in a general sort of way, a new cycle beginning um, and perhaps some form of expansion in your life where things were just kind of going along very normally. And then it's, you suddenly had, um, a great development, but now that, um, Jupiter is retrograding and in the 12th house, it can bring up issues that have a less material quality to them and are more concerned with the spiritual and this is your specialty. So an example can be any kind of spiritual practice, spiritual teacher, um, or even like if you had wanted to go on some kind of a vacation that was actually like a retreat, because Jupiter rules the ninth house of long distance travel and the 12th house can be like retreat centers or well, like monasteries, places that are very, um, that, that cater to people who want to be in solitude, those kinds of places. And perhaps because of the shutdown, there was some cancellation of something along these lines. And now it's all systems go. Um, I'm just trying to think. So, um, The other thing that is happening is that Mars is going into Virgo. And I believe this is happening tomorrow, which is July 29th. And this will be your opposite sign, Virgo. And that means the opposite house, which is the seventh house. Mars in the seventh house, for people who have, um, who are coupled and their relationship is basically good. This can add spice to your relationship. Maybe you're going to start an exercise program together, or you're going to, um, if you are like going on any kind of uh, travel adventure, you're going to be doing a lot of hiking. And, um, or, or like if you have had work schedules that um, have made it hard for you to spend time with your partner. Maybe you're just spending a lot of time together. And that could also be if you're on vacation and you're not having work coming in between the two of you um, having that time. But also, if the relationship is a little bit challenged, this could be bickering, you know, some sort of friction, fighting, and it could be like not so pleasant. Also, but um, Mars is a sex drive. So if that is something, again, like if you haven't been able to spend much time with your partner, or maybe your partner has been separated physically from you because they're working overseas, you might be visiting them. They might visit, be visiting you. And it's like, dang, damn. Um, 
So that that's uh, that's the uh, Mars energy, and that'll be all throughout August. Um, on the eighth of August, we have a new moon, eight eight Lionsgate portal at sixteen degrees of Leo, and for Pisces. This is your sixth house. So this is like you're kind of getting down to brass tacks. Um, this is supposed to be good for manifestation. So if you're looking for a new job, light a candle, a prosperity candle, go to the new AG shop or the, the health food store if they have those kinds of candles and just buy yourself one of them and like a Reiki candle or whatever and go to town. You never know what will happen and meditate. Um, this is good for, you know, actually getting, you know, getting a job. Um, but to the sixth house, unless you're like a teenager and you're just going to get anything, but if you're really looking for ways you can serve others, you know, this is what the sixth house represents, your service to others. So this could be alignment with, something that really utilizes your talents. So that could be good. And also this is, can be good for a new health regimen too. On the 11th, Mercury goes into Virgo and there's that seventh house. So Mercury has been in that sixth house until the 11th. And so for the first uh, 10 days of the month or 11 days, um, Mercury, and even before that, um, Mercury has been, maybe you've been reading up on nutrition and trying to decide, you know, what you're going to, how you're going to, um, improve your health, what things you're going to do. And so, um, and, and with contracts or talking to places of employment, there's just a lot of practical energy here. This is the area of the daily schedule, and that might be something that you're looking at, how you want to order your time. Uh, Pisces is a sign that, because your ruler is Neptune, uh, there can be this tendency to kind of float through life and kind of take it as it comes, which, you know, there's a good side to being like that, but it can also lead you to feel as though you're not really, um, doing something that has, um, that you want to do, that you're just kind of, uh, living in the moment. But, you know, when you're trying to accomplish your goals, sometimes you have to do things to think about the future. And, um, for Pisces, some Pisces though can be very much like Virgo. Um, I remember reading in a book that uh, Pisces can resemble other signs. And uh, sure enough, I've met Pisces who act more like Sagittarians or more like Aries and or Leos, and they're very gregarious. And some who are very businesslike, and they're more serious, and they're more uh, organized than you would expect. So it does run the gamut, you being the last sign of the zodiac and all. Alrighty then. So, um, that's happening. And then on the 16th, Venus goes into Libra and, um, that's the eighth house. So this, so Venus is actually in that seventh house. Um, oh, wait a second. No, scratch that. Let me make sure that I've got this right. Eighth house, right. Yeah, Venus, when Venus is in Virgo, it's in that seventh house. So actually, um, you do have Venus there when Mars is there. So that might be more like fireworks than any kind of friction. When Venus goes into the eighth house, this is taking intimacy at a deeper level. So, you know, um, the marriage, marriage represents the seventh house. And it's interesting that relationships or intimacy and relationships are connected to the eighth house. So it almost makes you think that 
the seventh house is more about the outward symbol of marriage um, because um, it's also the house of legal affairs. And, you know, um, a marriage license is a legal document. The eighth house is the intimacy. It's beneath the surface. Um, and that's Scorpio's do domain. So the other thing about the eighth house is it can be other people's money. So maybe somehow, whether your partner, if you are coupled, has um, come into some money, then that becomes your money. Or if there's some kind of uh, inheritance issue or other type of... Uh, like an insurance payout or something, you could be benefiting from something like that. On the 19th, Uranus goes retrograde at 14 degrees of Taurus. Taurus is a friendly angle to you. It's uh, the third house. And um, so this is a transit that is um, affecting you, Pisces, as it, as it relates to intellectual affairs but of a more practical matter. The third house as Gemini's domain is about the dissemination, the absorption of information. So you communicating information to others, absorbing it in the form of learning or whatever you want to call it. And, um, the media and things like that. You're in this, in this sector can, uh, you know, when it's direct, can really talk about um, maybe technology being a chief uh, way that you get the word out. So let's say you have your own business and you have relied upon word of mouth. That's something that I, I think a lot of water signs would do is make it very personal and tell your friends, tell your family that you have this business. Well, sometimes people want to branch out and let pe more people know about their business. And I honestly don't know how people advertise without something like YouTube or other types of online um, ads or whatever, um, hyping, you know, whatever you want to call it. Because, um, you know, local newspapers, people don't really read that too much. Yes, there's there are online versions of those things. That used to be the big thing, like these free newspapers, but you know the or even the the one ads and and the uh, paid newspapers, um, the classified section. But it's like print journalism is fairly dead. So uh, in and and that applies also to the local area, not just like you know major cities and stuff. So I'm trying to figure out like how people actually do that. Flyers, you know, there, and all of these things can be part of the third house. Um, although I think the ninth house is advertising, but marketing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it could probably be even both in a certain way, but in any case, um, this can also be about, um, if you're like a teacher or something and you want to, reach the the third house is more like uh for elementary school uh teaching and things like that but it can be about your communication style your teaching style in general so even if you were like a professor or something like that and um uranus is really about thinking outside of the box not being a conformist if you are trained in a certain way you come up with your own program maybe because based on your experiences and um maybe it deviates from what you were taught in the textbooks or by your professors when you were learning how to teach uh when we, but we're talking about a retrograde here so this is really um kind of internalizing this issue and it's also about how you communicate so if you are a writer in some way, and maybe you feel that you're too conventional, your thoughts are too conventional, Uranus is also about intuitive matters. So sometimes people go from, uh, you know, especially like a Pisces type of person, you might start out with 
conventional teaching and then you realize you want to become a, a meditation teacher or something more um, of a spiritual type of an, maybe like a, even like a life coach or something where you're utilizing, you're kind of tuning into that person at a deeper level to know what they need to do. Well, this is about kind of breaking free of those conventional chains that keep people um, on a certain track that might not be where they're at at this leg of their journey. Because it's not about, you know, these transits are not suggesting, oh, whatever you did in the past was a big mistake. And now this is where you should be. It's saying, okay, you've been there, done that, you know what that's about, you've gained experience, and now you're going to take that and you're going to elevate it. You're going to raise the stakes because you started at that level. Same thing happens sometimes with the sixth house. Um, when people, and this Pisces, I would say, I would, I'm just guessing, but I wouldn't be surprised if a fair number of nurses are, um, you know, sun in Pisces, or maybe a prominent planet in Pisces, like um, Mars or something, because um, Pisces is a sign um, that is very much about caring for others. And so that's where you might begin, and then you might explore what is true healing. Does it just involve the body, or is there like a spiritual, emotional, uh, psychological component to it? And, you know, exploring those things. Okay. On the 22nd, there's a full moon at 29 degrees of Aquarius, that at critical degree, the last degree in Aquarius in that 12th house. So it's on the cusp with your first house. So that's another thing to note. It's like kind of, you know, between two worlds. The, the um, womb of creation and the physical manifestation. So that could be very powerful. The wild thing about this is that Jupiter is going to be connected to this. So Jupiter is going to be, I think, 26 Aquarius. So there's going to be a conjunction between these two things. So what will manifest? Oh, by the way, Jupiter in the 12th house could be good karma from a past life. And it's funny because when it's retrograding, I wonder if that's even more likely, you know, it's going back. Uh, on the same day, the sun goes into your seventh house in Virgo. On the 30th, Mercury goes into Libra, into that eighth house. So you might be studying something of a metaphysical nature. And so, yeah, that's another thing that I want to say about Uranus retrograding. Some Pisces people, especially if they have, I was going to say a Gemini, uh, like let's say... Um, Mars in, in um, Gemini or um, the moon in Gemini and they just have or even Aquarius placements if they're very um, intellectual as um, Pisces people and they almost kind of um, reject spiritual kinds of things and this can be because they when they were young they were um, shamed for their psychic abilities. If they were raised in a um, religiously conservative family that, that, you know, didn't understand what they were doing, just like Edgar Casey, who was a very famous psychic. A lot of people still follow his, his uh, you know, he had um, health. He was like a big health um, channeler. Uh, under under his uh, hypnosis, um, but anyway, he he was a Pisces, and he you know he grew up in the in conservative Southern. Uh, I don't know if it was Baptist, but some kind of like fundamentalist type of religion, uh, Christian uh, sect. That you know they're very um, leery of of any you know psychic phenomenon or, or um, phenomena <laughs> uh, 
uh, plural. But, uh, but in any case, um, something like that, or you just simply um, are rejecting your own nature. And sometimes that might have some other aspects to it that maybe even karmic aspects that you're, you're uh, transitioning from, you know, a past life as uh, somebody who didn't believe in God to now having abilities and you're kind of like, uh, still in that old frame of mind doesn't really matter but the point is is that uh, Uranus is very intuitive and that's um, Pisces people sometimes when I'm doing private readings I get Pisces or Aquarius people who are born around that cusp in February between Aquarius and Pisces and I'm thinking to myself wow they really are very um, intuitive when they were born in that, um, with that combination. So anyway, um, this could be something that, that blossoms for you and almost seems to come out of nowhere. And it's like one of those, you know, happy surprises. So let's see what transpires. And I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Thanks for listening. Take care.